today we would discuss on sub occipital region sub occipital region here we can see the posterior view of neck so where the sub occipital region is located so sub occipital region is limited above by the inferior nuchal line of occipital bone so here is the external occipital protuberance superior nuchal lines on each side there side and inferior nuchal lines so above it is limited by inferior nuchal lines and uh, below by a massive spine of lamina of second cervical vertebra that is axis so here would be the second cervical vertebra or c2 axis and laterally by the mastoid process so the mastoid process is located posterior to the ear So superiorly by inferior nuchal line, inferiorly by the lamina of C2 on each side and laterally by the mastoid process and transverse process of atlas and axis as well. So these are the boundaries of suboccipital region. This region is clinically important because neurosurgeons approach the posterior cranial fossa through this triangle suboccipital muscles the suboccipital muscles are short postural muscles that lie deep in the suboccipital region they connect the first cervical vertebra that is atlas to the second cervical vertebra axis so here uh, the muscles are covering the atlas and axis so this is the spine of second cervical vertebra that is axis so here is the tubercle of C1 that is atlas and connect both the vertebra to the base of the skull. So we can see they are connecting to the skull as well. So the suboccipital muscles uh, all together they cause the extension of head at atlanto occipital joint and rotation of head uh, and at atlanto axial joint. So they can act as extensors and rotators of head but they function chiefly as postural muscles. Let us name these suboccipital muscles. On each side uh, there are four muscles which form the suboccipital group of muscles. They are like uh, rectus capitis posterior major. Rectus capitis posterior, major muscle. The next is the rectus capitis posterior minor. The medial one, smaller one is capitis posterior, minor muscle. And the third one is obliquus capitis inferior. inferior then obliquus capitis superior the lateral one is obliquus capitis superior so these are the four uh, suboccipital muscles all these muscles are supplied by dorsal ramus of c1 spinal nerve or suboccipital nerve so all these muscles are supplied by dorsal ramus of c1 nerve spinal nerve otherwise called as suboccipital nerve. The posterior cranial fossa is approached uh, by neurosurgeons by removing the brain tumor by clearing the suboccipital muscles and removing the expo exposed occipital bone. Now let us discuss about the suboccipital triangle. The suboccipital triangle is present on back of the neck bounded by rectus capitis posterior major muscle above and medially. 
So this small triangle what you can appreciate between these muscles is the suboccipital triangle. So uh, posterior above and medially that is superior and medially it is bounded by rectus capitis posterior major muscle and obliquus capitis superior is above and laterally. So this is obliquus capitis superior which is above and laterally and inferiorly that is below and laterally it is formed by obliquus capitis inferior. This is obliquus capitis inferior. So rectus capitis posterior minor you can see here this rectus capitis posterior minor muscle uh, is also in this region but does not form a part of suboccipital triangle. So the triangle is covered by a layer of fibro fatty tissue and many muscles which forms the roof of the triangle. So let's see the roof of the triangle. As I said that the triangle is covered by a layer of dense fibro fatty tissue. So here the fibro fatty tissue is removed and uh, the which uh, deeps to lie deep to the semi spinalis capitis muscle. So the same first muscle which is removed is trapezius in the neck. So this is the cut part of trapezius. Deep to trapezius is semispinalis capitis muscle. So deep uh, and also the longest muscle capitis muscle which is present on the medial side. So these are the muscles which cover the triangle forming the roof of the triangle. The floor of the triangle is formed by posterior atlanta occipital membrane. So this white color membrane over which you can see an artery here that is the vertebral artery. So this is white color thing is the uh, atlanta occipital membrane. So this is the posterior So posterior atlanta occipital membrane and also the posterior arch of the atlas we can see here part of the muscle is rectus capitis posterior major is cut and removed to expose the arch of the atlas. So these two structures forms the floor of the triangle. The contents of the triangle it contains the third part of vertebral artery. So this artery which is looping here is the so vertebral artery and dorsal ramus of C1 nerve suboccipital nerve which supplies all these suboccipital muscles. So we can see the suboccipital nerve ramifying here to innervate all these suboccipital muscles. The next content is suboccipital venous plexus. We can see several veins within the triangle forming suboccipital venous plexus. So these are the contents. Vertebral artery and suboccipital nerve lie deep uh, in a deep groove on the upper surface of the posterior arch of atlas. So here is the posterior arch of atlas. Which forms the floor of the triangle. We can see above to which vertebral artery and suboccipital nerve. C1 that is the first cervical nerve dorsal ramus. So they are present in the 
grew on the upper surface of posterior arch of the atlas. Suboccipital plexus of veins uh, lie in and around the suboccipital triangle. It connects the veins like uh, the muscular veins of the neighboring six muscles, occipital veins, they connect the occipital veins, internal vertebral venous plexus, condylar emissary veins from the sigmoid sinus, deep cervical vein and plexus of veins around the vertebral artery. So hence uh, these venous plexus provides a number of alternative routes for venous drainage. The connection between the suboccipital venous plexus and internal vertebral venous plexus serves as a path of intracranial infections in carbuncles of neck. Next we shall talk about a structure which is a content of the roof called as greater occipital nerve. So here we can see We can see the greater occipital nerve winding round the inferior obliquus capitis muscle. So the greater occipital nerve, the unique feature of this it is, it is the thickest cutaneous nerve in the body. It winds around the middle of the lower part of inferior obliquus capitis and it runs upwards medially and it crosses the suboccipital triangle and pierces the muscle forming the roof that is semispinalis capitis and trapezius to supply the back of the scalp up till the vertex. So it pierces the trapezius semispinalis capitis up till the back. So it is mainly meant to supply the posterior part of the scalp. Next regarding the occipital artery in the suboccipital region, the occipital artery runs deep to the mastoid process and muscles are attached to it. You can see here, this is the occipital artery. Which lies deep to the muscles attached to the mastoid process. Occipital artery is a, a branch of external carotid artery. So, it is uh, lies deep to sternocleidomastoid, splenius capitis and longismus capitis muscles. So, this is the splenius capitis, here is longismus capitis. So, the tra uh, this artery is present almost at the apex of posterior triangle of the neck. Uh, that is the artery when crosses the rectus capitis lateralis and superior oblique muscle, semispinalis capitis muscles at the apex of posterior triangle of neck. Finally, the artery pierces the trapezius that is around 2.5 cm away from the midline and comes to lie along the greater occipital nerve. So, we can see this, this occipital artery which is along with greater occipital and it presents a tortuous course in the superficial fascia of the scalp. And it branches in the region uh, like uh, mastoid branches, meningeal branches and gives off some muscular branches. Now let us discuss about the third part of vertebral artery. The third part of vertebral artery appears in the suboccipital region uh, through the foramen transversarium of atlas vertebra. So it reaches this triangle through the foramen transversarium of atlas vertebra. After uh, emerging from the foramen transversarium, the artery winds backwards medially behind the lateral mass of atlas and lodges in a groove uh, that is the upper surface of the posterior arch of atlas and finally leaves the triangle by passing deep to the thick lateral edge of the posterior atlanto-occipital membrane to enter into the vertebral canal and where it continues as fourth part of vertebral artery. The vertebral artery is separated from the posterior arch of the atlas by C1 nerve that is first cervical nerve or suboccipital nerve and its uh, dorsal and ventral ramus. So we can see the arch is separated from the artery by C1 nerve. The tortuous course of the third part of vertebral artery in this region may serve to damp 
down the arterial pulsations within the cranial cavity. But it is affected by atheroma that is uh, plague forms in the artery and also it is affected by the movements of head and neck and may affect the flow of blood through it and cause the temporary fainting or unconsciousness. First cervical nerve. The first cervical nerve while passing behind the lateral mass of the atlas divides into dorsal and ventral ramus. Dorsal ramus otherwise called as suboccipital nerve breaks up immediately into five uh, muscular branches to innervate four suboccipital muscles that is rectus capitis posterior major, rectus capitis posterior minor, obliquus capitis superior and obliquus capitis inferior and also supplies semispinalis capitis as well. So here in this image we can see the dorsal ramus of C1 splitting into five terminal branches. Ventral ramus supplies the rectus capitis lateralis and rectus capitis anterior. So ventral ramus is meant to supply rectus capitis lateralis and rectus capitis anterior muscles. So with this we complete the suboccipital triangle. Thank you.